What the media does is it teaches us to overreact. It teaches us to be the first person to say something and comment. It teaches us to try to be the funniest tweet on Twitter or the most interesting person on Instagram or I guess the coolest meme god grandma on Facebook. It's driving us down a very dark path. Now let me ask you something. What do people watch? Netflix, YouTube, Facebook video, their one show on TV, maybe one, two or three shows. I had a show. It was called Walking Dead. And I stuck through it through all its bad plot twists. And I was hoping it was going to get better. And then they got rid of Rick. And then they fast forwarded seven years in the future. Now in terms of TV, I pretty much watch sports only. And not many people are watching TV. It's no secret anymore. So what are these networks, these cable companies going for? They're going after creators. They're going after their platforms. They're going after their advertisers. Why? Because they want a piece of the pie. They want to turn YouTube and all these other platforms into TV again. They want to turn it into pay for a bulk of crap, pay for 20 minutes of commercials per hour. Walking Dead added an extra seven minutes to the end of their show so they could add an entire ad block in. It didn't add any content. In fact, it made the ratio higher of commercials <laughs> to content. Now the end goal here is the same as usual. Blame the people that best suit our agenda and get people to stop watching them, get advertisers to stop promoting them. Use an event to blame, to blame PewDiePie or whoever your enemy is, political, financial, doesn't matter. Use this event to blame PewDiePie somehow. This is not an adequate response. PewDiePie's hearts and prayers won't change the fact his platform is a pipeline for the right. Oh, his platform is a pipeline. All, all the children that he doesn't have us viewers. Anybody that acts like a playful gateway into white supremacy is a shh lord. F PewDiePie and his defenders. If he wasn't softening racism, which side note, of course he always does. With gaming videos, <sighs> there would be less young white men flocking to the alt-right. He, he's another gateway to hate. Yes, when I was watching PewDiePie do his virtual reality thing, where Uganda Knuckles uh, was running up to him, 500 different people, I really felt like I was connecting to white supremacy. Caitlin Bennett says, your favorite girl prediction, social media sites will ban you if you say subscribe to PewDiePie because of everything that happened in New Zealand. It wouldn't shock me one bit. It wouldn't shock me one bit either, Caitlin. This is not far off from what their plan would be. They just don't like it that PewDiePie doesn't agree with them and doesn't bow down to them, and he has way more viewers than them. That's the problem here. The PewDiePie issue is complicated because on one hand, he's emboldening white nationalists, mass murderers, but on the other hand, he's awful and offers humanity nothing of value. The soy levels here, my goodness, I couldn't even hope to achieve such levels of soy in my bloodstream. The fact that you're claiming that PewDiePie has anything to do with na white nationalism or ever mentions anything to do with race at all makes you an insane person. Everything from the act to the guns to the words, calling himself an eco-fascist with no particular ideology and not believing in conservatism or liberalism and basically being an accelerationist who wants to sow division by purposely planting all these things. All the evidence is available, but the media is too lazy and they have an agenda to fill. They just say far right, far right white supremacists because pain and suffering does not matter to these people, only the bias and only pushing the agenda, and in the end, making the most money and withholding the most power. The only people that are fooled by this, again, are the media, who cannot take... I mean, over here, this happened at, what, 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning? They can't even take the time to research this, or they don't want to, or they'd rather go with their own story. They just pass on their own bias again and again. Covington, all these things that just keep happening over and over again. Jesse Smollett, they're literally making people go crazy. And they don't seem to care. They don't seem to have any remorse. You see Brian Stelter get in, interviewed by InfoWard and he's just like, well, see, I've never said that. CNN's never said this. Uh, you guys, I see what you're doing here. That, it makes me feel really bad for boys and really bad for girls. Really bad for boys who are told they're toxic and they're bad from the start and being man, being a man is bad, and I feel bad for girls who are told by Snapchat that being fat's cool, but also you need to be really hot, uh, you're oppressed, but also take pictures of your ass, and until people start widely, peacefully, but widely condemning media 
outlets who just jump the gun and everything. And there should be some sort of, I don't know, monetary fine or punishment for publishing these stories, and which are always followed with a retraction that doesn't get anywhere near the amount of traffic. But hey, as Tim Pool says, it's all clicks for them. Till people start condemning the media for this, people are going to keep going crazy and people are going to keep acting like idiots and our society is just going to become whoever is biggest on Instagram is going to rule the world.